Dane and I'm the Safari Expert and in this video I'm going to share some thoughts with you on what the best lens is for wildlife photography in an underground hide. And if I look a little bit sleepy it's because I've just spent five days here in Umgedi underground hide at Antares Bush Camp. And if you want to see a little bit more about that adventure go and check out this video. A lot of people have asked me over the years what is the best lens to take to an underground height when you're doing wildlife photography? And the answer is, you really want the biggest possible range. Now I'm gonna go through them all the way from the widest to the longest and tell you kind of what photos you can expect to take with each lens. Now let's start with this wide one. This is my 16 to 35 f4 lens. Now, I know a lot of people don't have wide angle lenses like this, but it really allows you to take very creative photographs in an underground height. Here at Umgedi um, at Antares, I've been able to take some beautiful star shots because the hide faces south. Um, and you'll only be able to do that when you have a proper wide angle lens. If you have a kit lens like the 18 to 55, you'll really struggle to get enough stars in. And even a 24 to 70 um, is a little bit too long. So I recommend if you want to take beautiful star photographs um, in places like Umgedi Hide or um, down at Zimanga or even in Mashatu, you want something like 16 to 35 or Nikon's 14 to 24 or even one of the Tamron or Sigma lenses. It's also great if you at a place where elephants visit regularly because if there's a big herd and especially if there's wonderful clouds behind them, a wide angle lens is going to work really well. Now, next up is my Canon 24 to 105. Um, I don't really use that for star shots, but I certainly do use that for wider shots when I want to get the whole water hole in, and especially if there's a big animal like an elephant or a giraffe. But what's nice about it is one moment you can get that wide shot, but the next you can zoom in a little bit and get a really nice portrait shot. One drawback of the 24 to 105 is the fact that it's an f4 lens and not an f2.8. And that just means that you can't get quite as shallow a depth of field. So I love a 70 to 200 f2.8, especially for mammal photography in an underground height. Because what it allows you to do is to not only blur the background, but also blur the foreground beautifully. And that just really makes that animal pop. It is a little bit short for bird photography, but places like this, it works absolutely fantastic for mammals. Now, my personal favorite lens for hide photography is Canon's 100 to 400. And the reason for that is it gives me a great range. And I'll probably choose this one if I'm allowed to take only one lens into an underground hide. The reason for that is at 100 millimeters, when I'm wide, I can photograph a herd of animals um, drinking next to each other and capture a little bit of the water hole itself. But if I zoom in to 400, it allows me to get beautiful portraits of their faces and some body parts, or if the edge of the water is close enough, beautiful bird photographs as well. That's something that's very difficult to do with a 70 to 200. It's a little bit short for bird photography. Now, if that's what you like best to photograph birds, I really recommend that you bring something like the 600 millimeter prime, because it just gets you very, very close to get those beautiful bird portraits where the background is perfectly blurred. And I know many of you don't own a lens like this, but remember you can rent it from a place like Outdoor Photo, and I'll place a link in the description to their rental department. One thing that you do have to remember about a 600 f4 like this is you can't zoom out. And that means if you're at a place where the water's edge is very close, anything bigger than about a sparrow is going to feel very tight within the frame. Here at Ontario's Bush Camp at Umgedi Hyde, it's great for photographing birds on the other side, but as soon as something comes to drink quite close, it's really way too tight. You can, however, use it for close-ups of body parts of animals or really nice close-ups of their faces, especially if there's a little bit of eye contact. And like I said before, if the distance to the edge of the water is perfect, there's nothing that can beat this lens to get perfect bird portraits. Another thing that's very important to remember, not only with the 600 f4, but all these lenses is when animals and birds are that close to you, the depth of field becomes extremely shallow. So it's very important that you always get the focus on the animal or the bird's eye. In fact, at a later stage, I will actually make a video about depth of field specifically, how you determine it and how important a role it actually plays in your wildlife photography. Once I've done so, I'll link to it above so you can check it out after this one. 
one of the lectures in my online course called wildlife photography for beginners and amateurs actually covers depth of field in depth so if you want to go and check that out there's also a link in the description below in that course i actually cover camera equipment but also things like settings animal behavior creativity and composition so definitely something worth checking out if you want to improve your wildlife photography skills so to summarize Every lens will give you an opportunity to take a different kind of shot in an underground hide. And I recommend that you bring everything you own. If you're going to take just one lens, bring something with a good range, like either a 70 to 200 or ideally 100 to 400 that allows you to get relatively wide shots, but also portraits. If you enjoy my videos here on YouTube, please consider popping into my supporters page by following the link in the description below and buying me a coffee which is a small once-off donation of $3 per cup. Or show long-term support by becoming a PAC member for only $5 a month. All these donations are used to travel to new awesome destinations and to create more and better safari videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what your favorite lens is for hide photography.